So we have another worked example on resolving forces. We are having these three forces. We have 4 newton force, the 6 newton force, and this 2.83 newton force. They are all acting on this point that is at the origin and we are being required to find the resultant force. So again here, we are going to resolve these forces. We are going to find the resultant force along the x. Then we find our, the resultant force along the y. Then after finding the resultant force along the x and the y, we are going to go ahead and draw a triangle of forces to help us locate where the resultant force is passing. And then we'll go ahead and use Pythagoras theorem to find the resultant force and thereafter find the direction of the resultant force. So we'll get started by resolving these forces along the x-axis. So to resolve these forces along the x-axis, again, I will draw that arrow to show that I'm resolving along the x-axis and then I'll be like now along the x-axis let's go for force by uh, force resolving along the x-axis now um, when we are resolving these forces along the x-axis or along the y-axis we do so using trigonometrical identities that is we use Sokatoa I am not going to explain how to where you will use cos or where you will use sine. I explained that extensively in an earlier session. Link to that session is in the video description. So right here, I am assuming that by the time you're watching this, that you are familiar up to that level. You know how to resolve, to use the Sokatoa to resolve these forces. So. Here we go. We'll start with this. So this one, we have this force right there. So we're resolving this along the x-axis right there. So this is going to become 2.83 newtons. So along the x, we have 2.83. And this is going to be sine of 45. This is positive because this is happening in the positive direction. Then we go to this. Uh, this is 6 newtons. This 6 newtons force resolving this along the x-axis remember it is still in the positive side of the x-axis so it's going to be a positive value so i'm going to say it is plus six times the cosine of 30 degrees then we have this one here it is on the negative side of the x-axis so it means it's going to be minus minus resolving this it is going to be four cosine of 30 so it's minus four i mean four cosine of 60 so it's minus 4 cosine of 60 so in other words this uh, computing this is going to give us the resultant force al um, there is the, the result the component of the forces along the x-axis again how I use sine cos and cos I explained those details extensively in the video in the video earlier link to that is in the video description so here we shall get 5.1972. So now that we have resolved, we have, we've gotten the component of all the forces in the x-axis, let's go and find the, the component of all the forces in the y-axis again. I'll use that arrow to show that now what we are calculating here is the component of all the forces in the y-axis and we shall go force by force. Let's begin with this one. This is 2.83 resolving this along this axis is going to be 2.83 cosine of 45 and of course this is positive because it's on the positive side of the y-axis then we have this 6 newton force resolving it along the y-axis remember this is now on the negative side of the y-axis because it's on the negative side of the y-axis so we shall say minus 6 sine of 30 Same thing here, this force is on the negative side of the y-axis, it's below. So it's going to be still, we shall say minus 4 sine of 60. And so when we compute this in our calculator, we end up with a negative value. We, it is The answer is negative 4.462. So along the x, we have this, it's a positive value, along the y, we have this, it's a negative value. So from this, we go ahead and draw our triangle of forces. 
So from our triangle of forces, we are guided that the x value is a positive value. So we know that this is going to start from here and we move in the positive direction of the x-axis. And when we move in the positive direction, it is 5.1. We've moved in the positive direction of the x-axis like that. And then the y is negative 4. So meaning that from here, we move downwards, not upwards. Downwards since it is negative. So it is negative 4. Remember, these signs are just giving us the direction of the forces. This is the magnitude of the force. The sign gives us the direction of the force. Otherwise, these are forces and they are newtons. So this is 4.46 force is acting in that direction downwards. So after getting that like that, then it means our resultant force runs from here, from beginning to where the forces end. So this is the resultant force that we are mandated to find. After finding the resultant force, we need to find the direction of the resultant force by finding that angle theta. So what we are going to do here, we are going to find the resultant force using Pythagoras theorem. Then afterwards we shall find the direction of the resultant force using trigonometry. So let's go ahead and find our value of R, the resultant force. So to find the resultant force, we shall say R squared using Pythagoras theorem is going to give us this squared, which so happens to be 5.1972 squared plus this squared, 4.4629 squared. And from here, we shall end up with our resultant force as we shall end up with our resultant as 6.85 newtons, like that. Then we go ahead and find the direction of the resultant using, since this is the right angle triangle right here, we can go ahead and use the tan of that angle. So we know that the tangent of that angle is given by. Opposite, which is 4.4629, divide that by the adjacent, which is 5.1972. And so from there, we can go ahead and find. So mean find theta, which is tan. So our answer here will be. So from here, we shall conclude by saying, now this 40.653 degrees, this resultant force is acting at that angle. It's below the positive x-axis. Like this video if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. Check out other physics tutorials on the channel. My name is Arnold Rangakuramia, and this is Kisembo Academy. Take care.